In this video, we're going to create display panels and then create and map textures to those panels. First, we will use the floor command to turn the perimeter rectangle we drew into a floor for our exhibit booth. Select the rectangle, go to the spotlight menu, and then under architectural, choose floor. Set the bottom Z to negative two inches, then set the thickness to two inches and click OK. With the floor selected, use the attributes palette to give the object a gray 60% fill color. Now right click on the floor and under send, choose send to back. Now let's create the flat display panels. We'll start by using the rectangle tool and the automatic working plane mode to create the base shape for the center panel. Switch to a right rear isometric view and zoom in on the lower rear truss. Activate the rectangle tool in the basic palette and in the view bar, click on the plane pop-up menu and choose automatic. Move your cursor over the top rear cord of the lower rear truss. The face will highlight in blue. Snap your cursor to the intersection of this cord and the cord of the vertical truss as shown. Make sure the top face of the cord is highlighted in blue and click once to start the rectangle. Move your cursor to the other side of the cord and click a second time as shown. You can press the control plus the middle mouse button to activate the flyover tool while using another tool to adjust your view if needed. Now we will need to extrude this rectangle to create the panel. Move your cursor over the rectangle we just drew. You will notice it highlights in red. This indicates that the automatic push-pull mode is available. Click once and move your cursor up. Zoom out slightly and then pan up. Snap your cursor to the bottom edge of the lower rear cord of the upper rear truss. Click once to extrude the rectangle. Next we will use the project tool from the 3D modeling tool set to create the side display panels that have the curved top. Switch to a right isometric view and zoom in on the bottom truss. Use the same techniques as before to draw a rectangle on the top face of the outer top cord of the bottom truss. Now switch to the 3D modeling tool set in the tool sets palette. Activate the project tool and enable the add mode in the toolbar. Click once on the rectangle. You will notice a red arrow appear in the center of the rectangle. This indicates the direction the rectangle will be projected. In the toolbar, enable the Add Downwards mode to change the direction of the projection. Now click once on the curved truss above the rectangle. The rectangle will be projected to the inside face of the outer cord of the curved truss. Next, we will use the Polyline and Offset tools from the basic palette to create the base curved polyline for the curved display panels. Then we will use the Push-Pull tool from the 3D modeling tool set to extrude the panel. Switch to a left isometric view and zoom in on the bottom curved truss. Activate the polyline tool in the basic palette and enable the point on arc mode in the toolbar. Move your cursor over the top face of the outside cord of the bottom curved truss. Snap to the back left corner. Make sure the top face of the cord is highlighted in blue and when the endpoint smart cursor queue appears, click once to start the polyline. Move your cursor to the center of the cord along the outer top edge. When the midpoint queue appears, click again. Snap your cursor to the back right corner of the cord, and when the endpoint queue appears, double click to create the polyline. Now activate the offset tool in the basic palette. In the toolbar, enable the offset by point and offset original object modes then click on the Preferences button. Enable the Close Open Curves option and click OK. Snap your cursor to the center of the inside edge of the cord. When the midpoint queue appears, double click to offset the polyline. The Closed Open Curves option compose the original polyline and the new offset polyline into a single closed polyline. Now activate the Push-Pull tool in the 3D modeling tool set. Make sure the first mode, Extrude Face mode, is enabled and click once on the polyline. Move your cursor up and snap to the bottom of the outer cord of the upper truss. You may need to use the control and middle mouse button shortcut to activate the flyover tool and rotate your view. Now let's create a texture 
through the resource browser and then map the texture to the center panel using the attribute mapping tool from the basic palette. You will need the center panel, side panels, and curve panels JPEG files. These can be found in the download section below the video. In the resource browser, click on the resources menu, choose new resource in, and then render works texture. In the edit texture dialog under color, choose image. Navigate to the center panel image and click open. In the edit image color dialog under tile image, uncheck horizontal and vertical and click OK. Name the texture center panel and click OK again. The new texture will be added to the resource browser. Locate the texture in the resource browser, drag and drop the center panel texture onto the center panel. Switch to a front view and activate the attribute mapping tool in the basic palette. Click once on the panel. In the change texture map type dialog, choose plain and then click yes. Click on the center of the panel to center the texture. Zoom in. To rotate the texture, click on the left middle control point. Move your cursor up and to the right until the working plane angle is negative 90 degrees and click a second time to rotate the texture. To scale the texture, you can use the corner control points or simply adjust the scale in the Object Info Palette. Let's start by increasing the scale in the Object Info Palette. In the Render tab of the Object Info Palette, set the scale to 30. Click and drag the center of the texture to the center of the panel. In the toolbar, switch to the Scale, Rotate by Center mode, then zoom out, Click and drag the bottom right control point down and to the right. Tab into the floating data bar and set the scale to 63 and press enter or return twice. The texture now fills the panel. Next, let's create a texture for the side panel. Switch to a left isometric view. Right click in the resource browser and choose new render works texture in. In the edit texture dialog under color, choose image. In the Choose Image dialog, select Import an Image File and click OK. Navigate to the Side Panels file and click Open. Uncheck Horizontal and Vertical under Tile Image and click OK. Name the texture Side Panels and click OK. Drag and drop the texture from the Resource Browser onto the Side Panel. Activate the Attribute Mapping tool in the Basic Palette. Click once on the panel. In the Change Texture Map dialog, choose Plane and click Yes. Click on the center of the panel to center the texture. In the Object Info Palette, under the Render tab, set the scale to 50. Now use the center control point to rotate the texture. Switch to a left view. Click and drag the texture to align the left edge of the welcome graphic to the left edge of the panel. Use the Flyover tool to review the texture. You may have noticed that when you view the side panel from the outside, the texture is reversed. This is because generic solids do not have multiple parts, so they can only use a single texture mapping for the entire object. So let's go ahead and use the Extract tool from the 3D Modeling toolset to extract a NURB surface on the other side of the panel. That way we can apply a texture and adjust the mapping. Activate the Extract tool in the 3D Modeling toolset. Enable the Extract Surface mode in the toolbar. Click on the outside face of the side panel. It will highlight in red. Click on the green checkmark button in the toolbar to extract the surface. We now have a NURB surface. However, you may have noticed that the surface and the panel are intersecting with each other. This is because they are on the same plane. We will use the nudge shortcut to shift the surface slightly. With the surface selected, switch to a top plan view. Hold the shift key and then press the right arrow key once to shift the surface to the right. If you switch back to a right isometric view and render it OpenGL, you will see that the texture on the panel and the NURB surface no longer intersect. Now we can map the side panel texture to the surface. Switch to a right view. With the NURB surface selected, double click on the side panel texture in the resource browser to apply it to the surface. Activate the Attribute Mapping tool in the Basic Palette. Choose Plane and click Yes. Click once on the surface. 
In the Object Info palette, under the Render tab, set the scale to 50. Then click and drag the texture and align the left side of the welcome graphic to the left side of the panel. If you switch between a left and right isometric view, you will see that the side panel texture looks correct on each side. So let's go ahead and mirror these objects to the panel on the other side. Select both the surface and the panel. Go to a top plan view. Activate the mirror tool. Use the center of the floor for the mirror axis and duplicate these objects to the other side of the booth. If you switch to a 3D view and then render in OpenGL, you will see that the textures are backwards on the left panel. To fix this, we will use the flip horizontal command from the modify menu. With the left panel and surface selected, switch back to a top plan view, go to the modify menu, then under rotate, choose flip horizontal. Go ahead and take a look at these in 3D and render it OpenGL. You'll see we now have two side panels with properly mapped textures on both sides. Now let's use the same techniques to map a texture to the curved panel. Switch to a left isometric view. Use the same procedure shown previously to create a new RenderWorks texture for the curved panel. Use the curved panels image for this texture and name the texture Curved Panels. Use the drag and drop method to apply the texture to the curved panel. Activate the Attribute Mapping tool. Choose Plane and click Yes. Click once on the center of the curved panel. In the Object Info palette, under the Render tab, set the scale to 50. Click and drag the texture to center it as shown. With the curved panel selected, go to a top plan view and mirror the panel to the other side. Finally, switch back to a 3D view and render in OpenGL. Use the flyover tool to review all of the panels and their textures. You can also render in final quality render works. Switch back to a top plan view when you're finished.